Hi guys, today I'm in Toronto, Ontario, and we're checking out Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. Let's go explore. Ripley's Aquarium of Canada is located in downtown Toronto, just next to the CN Tower. This is one of three aquariums owned by Ripley's Entertainment. The aquarium opened in 2013 and has 5.7 million liters of marine and freshwater habitats and is home to 20,000 different aquatic creatures from 450 species. This is the skeleton of a Sphactinus audix. It says they lived about 145 million years ago. Giant whale skeleton. Let's enter the Canadian waters. This gallery features animals found in the bodies of water that surround Canada, including the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and the fresh waters of the Great Lakes. These are owlwives. They usually swim together in huge schools. They invaded the Great Lakes through canals around the late 1800s, and by 1950, their population had exploded, and there's now thousands of these things living in the Great Lakes. We've got an old sturgeon sitting down in the bottom here. A bunch of other fish from the Canadian waters. These guys with the long noses up here, paddlefish. This guy hiding over here is the American eel and they're officially endangered in the wild. Pretty cool sculpture of a narwhal up here. In true Ripley's fashion, we always have to look for some oddities. It says there's a three-clawed lobster in here that was caught in a trap in 2019. Now he lives at the aquarium. Is that you? We gotta find this three clawed lobster. I only count two. Here's an any goat redfish camouflaged in with the rocks. Shows how they can blend in at different depths and different wavelengths of light. That's at zero meters. At 10 meters, a little harder to see. And 20 meters, almost invisible. Some giant Atlantic cod up here. Yeah, those little flatfish camouflage right in. Giant Pacific octopus hiding right there. Right beside this sea anemone. Some plumos anemones over there. And a giant red sculpin over here. Camouflaged into the rocks. These guys over here are lumpfish. It says that they can grow as large as a basketball. And they are pretty lumpy. Let's check out the Pacific Kelp. There's a big floor to ceiling aquarium here. It's about 25, 30 feet tall maybe. All kinds of fish to explore in here. Oh, here's one right here. different kinds of sea anemone. Yeah. 
says we're heading from the Canadian waters into the Arctic Passage. Welcome to the Arctic Passage, right up there just above North America. Those are the Alaskan king crabs. It says that they can grow as wide as a human can grow tall. It's pretty amazing. It's one big crab. Moving on, let's head into Rainbow Reef. Rainbow Reef recreates the warm coral seas of the Indo-Pacific water regions and is the most colorful gallery at the aquarium. His teeth? That must be a parrotfish. He has a beak. The reef is home to over a hundred different species of fish, making it the most biodiverse exhibit at the aquarium. And some of the colorful species that can be found here are the Picasso triggerfish, the batfish, and the blue tag. Moving on, we're going to go into Dangerous Lagoon. Looks like there's a moving walkway up here. This is the largest tank at the aquarium, holding about 2.9 million liters of water. Heading into the tunnel. And it's also home to North America's longest moving sidewalk. Some of the animals featured in this exhibit include the sand tiger shark, the sandbar shark, the rough tail stingray, sawfish and green sea turtles. Over here on the other side, we've got some giant grouper. Hiding right down here. Actually, there's a bunch of them there. Those are some massive fish. This is the largest bony fish found in the coral reefs and reaches up to about nine feet long. It's a giant grouper. Oh, there's one back there too. I see some rays over here. <laughs> Further into the depths of the dangerous reef. It's getting dark in here. Some tiger sharks maybe sitting down on the bottom there. Hey, I can see some strange sea creatures there on the other side. Look at this guy up here just resting right across the top of the tunnel. Oh, look at this big guy right back there. Dun, 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 dun. He's staring me down. Oh, I think we're gonna make it. Disappear. Disappearing shark. Oh, there he is. This submarine research vessel has been surrounded by sharks. Hey, looks like we can go inside that. Let's check it out. Oh. 
Okay. It's tough for an old guy, but here we are. Cool to have this 360 degree view of the aquarium. Awesome. And you can see the people in the underwater walkway right there. Oh, more turtles and sharks overhead. Whoa. Kids play area, we can hop on board the SS Discovery. Shark Reef Kids Crawl. It might be a bit too big for this one. The aquarium continues up ahead in the gallery, which features some of the most delicate underwater species from all over the world. Here's a little seahorse. Oh, where are you going, bud? This is cool. Little cuttlefish here. He's just hovering there. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. He's just hovering there. Little fins flapping. Here's a guy resting on the bottom here. Here's a display about an underwater remote operated vehicle. There it is. It says it can reach up to 200 meters depth and water temperatures of up to negative 50 degrees Celsius. Has an eight hour battery life. I guess you gotta then bring it back up and recharge your GoPro. Right back here, the electric eel. Oh, there's his tail back there. Oh. There you go, they have some light bulbs up here. I wonder if he's powering these light bulbs with his electric current. Oh, there he goes. Cool. This tank has a bunch of the porcupine fish. There he is. Happy looking guy. These always guys always look kind of happy. Just the way their mouth is. Oh, hi, bud. This tank is full of red-bellied piranha. Just waiting for their next meal. Let's see if we can see their teeth in there. Can you see them? I'd like to be here at feeding time. I remember back at the Vancouver Aquarium, they used to have a giant uh, cow's skeleton that they'd lowered into the piranha tank and I guess was used for feeding. Always creeped me out a little bit. And it looks like we're just in time to feed the rays. Stingrays are one of our four species of stingray here. We got the southern stingrays. We got the ones that look like baby, the little one up there with Pratt. That's a cow nose ray. We got rough tail stingrays, which basically look like the southern, but they're bigger. And then we got spotted eagle rays, which kind of look like they have stuck tails a little bit. Yeah, we're feeding the southern to the rough tails right now. So a stingray's face on the bottom kind of looks like a face. It kind of looks like a mouth and two eyes. But those are not two eyes, those are actually its nares, which are kind of like nostrils, but they're not for breathing, they're only for smelling. Their eyes, yeah, their eyes, exactly. Those eyes are up on top. But that kind of means they're not able to see what they're eating, and that seems like it would be a disadvantage, right? But they actually have a great adaptation to make up for that. And it's called electroreception. And it's a sixth sense. and allows them to sense electrical impulses from living things. 
So they're able to sense living things, anything near them, with electrical impulses, not using their sight, smell, hearing, any of those. It's a sixth sense. You got a question, buddy? In here we've got some banded archer fish. These fish are very cool, one of my favorite type of fish. They actually evolved so that they could spit water out into the air and they could knock insects and other food into the water where they could get it. Let's explore some shipwrecks. Oh, this is a cool themed area. This talks about the famous wreck of the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, which sunk in 1975 and immortalized in a song by Gordon Lightfoot. It says that over 700 feet long, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald was the largest ship to ever sail the Great Lakes. We have some sea lamprey, which are blood sucking fish. These guys kind of creep me out a little bit. There he is. Can you see the mouth on that? It says they attach to their prey using their sharp teeth. Got a diver overhead here. Look out! And of course a little display on sea monsters, fact or fiction, obviously fact. Here's a bit of a history on the Fiji mermaid, one of my favorites. It says in the 19th century the Fiji mermaid was believed to be a real mummified mermaid discovered in the South Pacific. Another mythical creature, the Kraken. Although, I kind of think that that's based a little bit in truth with some of the giant squids that are actually out there. Little display on Herman Melville's Moby Dick. He was described as having a pyramid-like hump on his back, a deformed jaw, over 27 meters in length, and apparently several harpoons were embedded in his side. Time to head over to Planet Jellies. Planet Jellies has color changing displays which highlight five different species of jellyfish including the Pacific Sea Nettle, Moon Jellies, Spotted Jellies and the Upside Down Jelly. This is a blue blubber jellyfish. All the pumps and tanks that are used to keep the aquarium running. It's kind of neat to see that behind the scenes view. Here's a top view of one of the big aquarium tanks. Down below you can see the uh, underwater tunnels, people going through. There's that big guy over there resting on top still. I guess that's his favorite spot. Over here can touch some rays in the touch pool. Looks like there's a shallower area across there where the rays get a little bit closer. Might be able to reach out and touch one if you're lucky. A quick look in the Ripley's Cargo Hold gift shop.
of course we have to exit through this gift shop. Some very punny t-shirts. There's Jurassic Shark. Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. We've got a Bob Marley jellyfish there. And I think this is Shark Vader. Here's a shark mug. Look at this, it's a Jaws mug. It says put a hot beverage inside and reveal what lurks beneath. Guess when you get a coffee, you also get a shark attack. Some Ripley's Believe It or Not postcards. A fish that cannot swim. It says the Antenarius hispidus can only walk. More Believe It or Nots. Toughest fighters on earth. The mantis shrimp are able to punch a force of a 22 caliber bullet. Wow. And finally, this goldfish lasted to 30 years old. It's one old goldfish. You don't think you're making that kind of commitment when you pick up a goldfish for your kid. 30 years later, still around. Overall, I thought the Ripley's Aquarium of Canada was a nice aquarium. It had a really super long underwater viewing tunnel, which was really cool. I would have liked to see a little bit more in the way of oddities and other Ripley's related material. I always go for that strange sort of oddity type of stuff and would have liked to see a little bit more here. Uh, the only thing I saw was really the sea monster exhibit as well as the three clawed lobster. But uh, overall, it is a really nice aquarium if you're in the Toronto area. Well, thanks for exploring Ripley's Aquarium of Canada with me. It was a really crazy day at the aquarium. Super busy, but there's a lot to see here. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember to keep exploring. Until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.